Now we're going to look at continuity at a point. We've already seen limit at a point, and this is related but different. A function f of x is continuous if there are no holes or breaks in the graph of f of x. So we can follow a graph left to right, moving all along it with your pen, pencil, finger, and you never have to lift it up to go over a hole or a jump or a break. f of x is discontinuous at a point, x equal to c, if there is a hole or a break at c. And we talk about holes and breaks and jumps all mixed up together. So let's look at this graph. If I start on my, the leftmost part of the graph, and I try to follow the finger down. When I get to this open dot, that's a hole. So if I want the value there, I have to jump up there and back down or have to go over the hole. So it's discontinuous at x equal to negative 1. So this graph is discontinuous at x equal to negative 1. As I continue on down there, across the axis, that's fine, going smooth. I get here to 1, and I have a value at x equal to 1, but I can't get beyond that without jumping up here because the numbers right beyond 1 are up here. This is an open dot at x equal to 1. I don't include 1 here. So I also have the graph discontinuous at x equal to positive 1. But from here on out, it is continuous. So if you look at a graph, we have a break or a jump or a hole. Any of those are the points where the graph and where the function are discontinuous. Let's look at a definition of what continuity means to math people. We said that x equal to negative 1 was a point where it's discontinuous. Is that related to limits in any way? Let's think about the limits at x equals negative 1. If I try to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of this function f of x, I look at both sides as I come in from the left-hand side, I get to this point, looks like x equal to 3. As I come in from the right-hand side, I also have x, y equal to 3 as x approaches negative 1, y equal to 3. The limit's the y value. So yes, that limit would be equal to 3. Same on both sides, I have a limit. But notice f of negative 1 is not equal to 3, comma. f of negative 1 does not equal 3. f of negative 1 is equal to 4. The limit existed. Limit exists. However, it is discontinuous at x equal to negative 1. So you can have a limit at a point, but it can be discontinuous at that point. Now as we move on over here, I have the limit as x approaches 1. There's a jump there. We said it was discontinuous there. Let's look at 1. Limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, uh, well, here's an issue. If I approach 1 on the left, approach 1 on the left, I get 1 for the y value, that is my limit value. If I take the limit as x approaches 1 on the right, that's equal to 2. On the right, approaching x equal to 1, y is approaching 2, so these limits are different. 
and I know that it is discontinuous at x equal to 1. But I have a function value there. f of 1 is equal to 1. Let me put that back up here. f of 1 is equal to 1. But that's only on one side, so that doesn't tell me that it's continuous or discontinuous. What tells me it's discontinuous is because the limits are not the same. My two limits are different. I'm not approaching the same point. So here, it's discontinuous at x equal to 1, and our reason we can say is the limit does not exist. So up here, the limit existed, but it was not equal to the function value to fill in the hole. Okay? So that's the reason it was discontinuous. On this x equal to 1 side, the limit did not exist, so it didn't matter if the function value was there. Let's look over here. Um, let's look at 0. x equal to 0. See what happens with this one. If I look for the limit as x approaches 0, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. Well, if I take the limit as I come in from the left-hand side, my y value is approaching 2. As I come in from the right-hand side, my y value is approaching 2, so my limit is equal to 2 as x approaches 0. But this was just a nice smooth curve in here. It was continuous, right straight through there. So the value for 2, that is the same as f of 0. When the limit exists at a point and the function value at that x is the same as the limit, the function is continuous. So a function is continuous if the limit as x approaches c of the function is equal to f of c. So that if I plug in my c value into the function or on the graph and I get at the same number, it is continuous at that point x equal to c. So related to limits, it uses limits but if either this side, which means the limit near x equal to c, is the same as this side, which is at x equal to c, if those two are the same, near c and at c, then the function is, just, is continuous at that point. And if either side is not right, then it's discontinuous at a point. Now we're going to use the graph we've worked with before and talk about continuity on an interval. You have to watch out for intervals because we're going to work with open intervals in this problem. And open intervals, I left out a V, open interval A to B means that A is less than X is less than b. This is not a point where x, y is a, b. So if it says an interval a, b, we want the x's between a and b. Um, if you have a square bracket, that would be a closed interval and you'd include the endpoints. So a closed interval a, b, is a less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b. And then you can have half open and half closed in all kinds of combinations. Well, let's look at this graph and look at different intervals along the x-axis and see whether or not the function is continuous on a variety of intervals. First, let's look at the interval from negative 1.5 to 0. So this is an interval on the x-axis, starting at negative 1.5, that'd be about here, going over to 0. Well, if I start at negative 1.5, it 
and move to the right as I go to the function, as I cross negative 1, I have a hole. So since there's a hole at 1, this is not continuous. Okay? Because of the hole at x equal to negative 1. How about the interval from 0 to 1? Not a point, the interval. So I'm starting at x equal to 0, and I'm going over to x equal to 1. And as I go along here, this is an open interval, does not include either end point, so it does not include that point. It's just the spaces in between. It's a nice smooth graph. So this goes, yes, continuous on that interval. How about the open interval from 1 to 3? I start at 1, but notice it's the open side of 1, so I do not include the point. So I'm not on this part of the graph. I'm up here because this does not include 1. So I'm starting just to the side of it. And I'm going over to where x is 3, so it's just this smooth piece of the curve right there. So yes, that is continuous. Um, how about from 0 to 2? Start at x equal to 0, go over to 2, but we've got this big jump, that break in the middle. So no, it's discontinuous. At x equal to 1, um, because of the, you can call it a break or call it a jump, whatever you want to call it. So it's on an interval, and we were just looking at open intervals here. You can look at the graph and determine just by kind of following your finger along and seeing when you jump at each interval. And that will tell you whether it's continuous or discontinuous on the interval by what happens within the interval. Now we're going to look at a function with a formula and try to determine if there are places where it is discontinuous and then look at it on an interval also. We looked at a graph to determine when it was continuous on a variety of intervals, and now we want to look at a formula for a function and see if we can get information about continuity or points of discontinuity for the formula. Now, one thing you have to remember, when we talked about fractions, you cannot ever have a zero in the denominator. So we want to find out where is there a zero in the denominator. So that involves factoring. And we also found out when we were looking at vertical asymptotes that they can occur when you have a zero in the denominator. So let's factor f. The numerator doesn't have anything to factor, but the denominator is x minus 1 times x plus 1. Since we cannot have a zero in the denominator, that means we have a problem at x equal to 1 and at x equal to negative 1. I always think about these on a number line so that if I put on a number line negative 1 and 1, I'm going to put it with an open dot because that means I cannot plug in those numbers. For the graph, there's a whole there, or maybe an asymptote, but there is some kind of problem that means that's discontinuous at those two points because they are not in the domain. I cannot plug in one or negative one. So knowing that this is really kind of what the x-axis would give me, let's check some intervals. Let's look at the open interval from negative infinity to zero to find out if it's continuous. Down here is negative infinity. Way well, on back this way. So if I start here and go up to zero, oops, I have to jump over that spot. So on this interval, not continuous because I have a hole in the middle of it. How about the closed interval from negative two to negative one? Now, both ends are closed. That means it has to include negative 2. 
and it has to include negative 1. Well, negative 2 is down here. That's okay. But when I get to negative 1, I cannot include the endpoint. If it were open, I'd be okay. But it does not include negative 1. So this is not continuous on that interval. How about the interval from negative 1 to 1? Negative 1 to 1. Notice this is an open interval on both ends. I do not want to include negative 1 and 1, which is a good thing because I can't include them. So I'm going sort of on the line in the middle. So yes, aha, I got one that is continuous on that whole interval. Let's see what else. Let's look at the interval from 0 to 3, open at 0, closed at 3. I'm starting at zero right here in the middle, and as I move along, oh, I have to jump over one before I get to three. Three's not a problem, but I jumped over one. Not continuous. Look at one more. How about the interval from one to three? Starting at one, going to three. Well, I could go all the way up to infinity here. That would not be a problem. And it's open at one. Does not include one, so yes, that's also continuous. Now notice that at my numbers, I could have them either open or closed, square brackets to include the point, parentheses to not include the point. At infinity or negative infinity, it must be an open parenthesis because infinity and negative infinity is not a number. Negative infinity is not negative 4 billion. So you just keep 4 billion and 1. You just keep going. So any time you have an infinity or negative infinity in an interval, you have to write it open. But you'd be very careful when you look at the other intervals to, to notice if they are open or closed.